This lesson is an introduction to drawing graphs, starting with straight line or linear graphs. To start this explanation, I'm using the most simple graph possible, where y is equal to x. It's usually necessary to plan out the scale carefully, so that as much of the graph paper is used as possible. That means that the graph can be as accurate as possible. Here, however, the scale is simple because the numbers are small, 0 to 5, 0 to minus 5 in both instances. Because this is a simple graph where the points are calculated, a very easy calculation, rather than from an experiment, the points easily fall into a straight line. A second graph plotted of y equals x plus 2 raises the line by 2 units, but still sloping up or at the same gradient as before. Many of the graphs we draw are from experimental results rather than by calculation. Illustrated here is an experiment done by some students where they hit a ball up in the air at different heights, timed it on the way up, and then timed it again on its fall. So the pairs of times from the hit to the top of the flight and from the top of the flight back down to shoulder height were recorded. These pairs of results shown here are going to be graphed one against the other to see if there's a relationship between them. To make the graph useful and accurate, it should be as large as possible whilst using a scale which is fairly simple. The scale I've used here is 1 second to 8 centimetres. Because both sets of values have about the same range, I'm using the same scale for each one. But that's not always necessary or possible. This planning of the scale can save a lot of unnecessary waste of graph paper and time. Once the scales are decided and the axes drawn, the points have to be plotted carefully. You can see, as these are being plotted, that the points fall roughly into a straight line, but not exactly. This might be because of experimental error, or it could be that it's not a straight line relationship. We look at the graph carefully to make that decision, and perhaps take one or two extra results to check it through. However, once we have decided, if it is a straight line, we draw the best straight line that we can through or close to as many points as possible, but not trying to bend it or change its shape. To illustrate some more straight line graphs, I'm going to use an Excel spreadsheet and graphing. If you don't know how to use this, it doesn't matter here. We're just using it as a tool to illustrate the changes of the graph. I'm going to draw a series of five straight line graphs. And these graphs are according to the equations at the top of these columns. So it's y equals x, y equals x plus 4, y equals x minus 5, y equals 2x, y equals a half x, and y equals 2x minus 5. The first two graphs lines drawn here are in blue y equals x and in red y equals x plus 4. The plus 4 raises the line but doesn't change the gradient or slope of the line. Notice that because the horizontal and vertical scales are different, the line is not at 45 degrees. The third line here in grey is of the equation y equals x minus 5, so the line has dropped by 5 units. Again, the gradient or slope is identical. The next graph line is here in yellow of the equation y equals 2x. The gradient, you'll notice, is twice that of the other lines. I need to draw some more graphs, but I'm going to rub two of them out, leaving the blue line, which is y equals x, and the yellow line, which is y equals 2x, and add a grey line, which is y equals a half x, 0.5x. You can see that the gradient is half of that of y equals x. Multiplying x by any number alters the slope or the gradient. So by way of a final example, I've added this last line, which is y equals 2x minus 5. That is the same gradient as the line y equals 2x, but because it's minus 5, the whole thing drops down by 5 units. Thank you for watching. You can freely copy notes on this topic from www.physics.org
The precise address is shown in the video description below.